Welcome to the Zeitgeist Lab. This is Collection One, Episode Two. I'm your co-host Alex. I'm co-host Brian. And we are ready to go. Brian, what's going on tonight? Not a whole lot for a Saturday. Yeah. Um, uh, this is the first episode we're doing where I'm not high. So oh, that's, I couldn't uh, tell that's last a, night. Yeah, that's a landmark. I, I, I could tell last night. You could yeah, tell we're, last we're, night? I could, yeah. I feel like I went off on some tangents and repeated myself a lot, but I'm, I'm game tonight. So. What was your... Uh your drug of choice for last night if you don't mind me asking oh just weed you know it's, that's the only one gotcha uh, yeah is, I mean, do i strike you as someone who does more than just weed i guess it all depends on how you <laughs> classify drugs because you tweet a lot about clonopin to the point where you've tried spell checking <laughs> me on how it's supposed to be spelled that's right <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm prescribed that, and I, I don't take that recreationally. I just like to joke about it. Gotcha, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, I'm, and I'm also weaning off of it, so that's a process, too. Gotcha, but, okay. Yeah, because those aren't very good for you. But uh, yeah, I didn't know how to yeah, necessarily no, breach the subject, because some of your tweets make it sound like you, uh, you have trouble uh, – with the drug tests, I guess. So I'm never quite sure where you're <laughs> at with some things on that. <laughs> yeah, no, I was supposed to be, um, I, I got a job as a COVID screener. Okay. At a hospital. And like, I filled out all the paperwork and then at the last second, they're like, yeah. And you have to pass a drug test. And I was like, okay, well, never mind. Gotcha. <laughs> Did you even bother, or did you just tell them you weren't going to no, do that? No, I didn't even. I didn't even bother. I told. I told them like truthfully. I'm like, you know, I, I smoke weed a lot, like yeah. a lot, a lot, and uh, I don't know if I'll. I'm not confident I could pass your little drug test. And they were like, <laughs> okay, we understand, but uh, yeah, they were cool about it. Um, there is like, I know there are ways around it, you know, but like I like, um. Like a couple of people are telling me, like, there's some stuff you can buy in like porno stores where, like, um, you can buy like what's essentially fake pee. Oh or something. yeah, I've heard of that as well. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, weird. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to risk it. Yeah. So you've but, never done the the fake the fake piss thing? No. Nah. Had someone else test I for had you? A job where I needed a drug test. So. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think they were gonna drug test during like COVID because if everyone needs jobs and. Everyone smokes weed, but well, it also seems like it would be uh, like you're taking resources away from lab testers that could be doing better things, I would think, than doing drug tests. Exactly. I don't know, though. That's weird. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, no, I'm stone sober for this one. You know, got my water. Nice. Ready to pod. After our, uh, I mean, our first episode isn't out yet, but after we did that last night, I have made myself a white russian here because i got to thinking about that oh, that's right yeah we were talking i don't know if we were talking about that on mic or off mic but yeah i think that was, I was on mic. Yeah. That. <laughs> it probably looks like i'm drinking like a glass of milk like i'm a small child or something but it's a white russian <laughs> <laughs> all right cool well, so i'll oh, go ahead um yeah so what i was gonna bring up um was that we like in our bio on twitter it says we're you know true or two trolls one podcast which was my original like suggestion for a name of the pod which i wasn't terribly in love with anyway uh-huh. but um we haven't really done a lot of like trolling or have we haven't really we've been mostly having semi-serious conversations here on the pod so like what are some for people that don't know you on twitter what are your big trolling moments you'd say my big trolling moments i don't I don't know because a lot of times I don't, I just feel like I'm a smart ass. And I think on Twitter that comes across as being a troll. I think, I mean, obviously, um, basically now I've alienated anyone who follows me on Twitter that's like family or I've got like a, uh, an old high school teacher that follows me. And I feel actually really oh, bad God. that they have to watch me tweet about like Blink 182 or the uh, Blink 155 podcast or tweeting at Nate Roos. So I think. 
to me, I'm they probably find me as a troll because I'm just talking about all the shit they don't get and they don't care about. But then even within like my own Twitter communities that I'm a part of, they just um, I guess maybe they just don't always understand it. I guess my biggest trolling moments were when I got kicked out of the Blink One Fifty Five fandom for snitch tagging. That's right. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was alluding to. Where like, <laughs> didn't you have to write like a whole essay? Yeah, uh, Josiah <laughs> requested that I write a, a five hundred word essay um, that was then presented to the the nation, their fandom, as they're called, um, to be judged, and they voted to kick me out of the the proverbial nation. But it was the the eve the eve of the one year anniversary of the pod, so Josiah had uh, mercy on me and allowed me to allowed me back into the ranks of of the niche. I'm glad you did because we might not even have this pod. Right. So yeah, I mean that was a big one, and then more recently, a lot of my like so I thought it was bad because especially we had like a family reunion is not the right word for it, but just back in October, all of my wife's siblings came into town because. A lot of them don't live here in Utah. So they came in, we all got together. And apparently at one point, um, her and a couple of her sisters and uh, my brother-in-law were discussing why I'm always tweeting about Blink-155 and what's going on with that. And like, it was like very (laughs) eye-opening to me. Like, oh, right, there are people here who I know in real life that have to (laughs) watch what I'm tweeting and have no idea what's going on. And so I thought I was alienating at that point. And then uh, in the last month or so, I apparently have dedicated my my Twitter account to trolling uh, Nate Roos, which I think is even more alienating for a lot of people. So... Yep. <laughs> Not for me though. I love it. I'm I'm fully on board with it. Um, I li- I like seeing it on the timeline just constantly. Right. Um, just asking him random ass questions. Well, I mean, yeah. if I mean, I'm glad he always responds, but that only fuels it more because does, I'm, yeah. I just kind of keep poking that bear. Like, what can I say that won't get a response, or where do I? Where does the line get drawn? He doesn't respond to me ever. On like the rare occasions where I do respond to him. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. I, don't, I, I think I think he just doesn't want to deal with that one. The Fentuzler might be too much, too much for, him. for him. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Which, which is honestly, it's like as a fan of his music, I think that is actually even better. <laughs> I think for me, I think that's even funnier. <laughs> well, see, and I'm a fan of his music, and a lot of the people he talks to, like especially from like the Blink-155 community, they they don't really know, they especially don't know like the format, but I'm very deep into all of that. So, but instead of like totally fawning over him, I basically turn it into this idea that I hate all his music and anytime I come across it, it just absolutely destroys my day. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a good troll move. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the weirdest thing is like, because he he has two kids and I have two kids. So sometimes we'll have like genuine Twitter exchanges about fatherhood and things like that. And those are like, that's, that's weird, but really cool actually. Yeah. At least you can like, to like take off the, the troll mask for that. Right. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. So what about you? What are, what have some of your bigger moments as a troll online been? Um, I don't know. Like the the Fentuzler has been like such a weird evolution. Like it's had various like eras in time where like um that have sort of coincided with like different eras of my own life, you know? Was the character ever viewed with any sort of disdain? Like I feel like from the beginning people just kind of got it. Like it was understood that it wasn't uh like it wasn't there was no malintent behind the persona, but maybe I'm misremembering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like. Well, I've definitely pissed off people before, um, but like, um, I think that might have been a good thing because, like, the first time I ever really like got into it with someone was like where I wasn't being like ironic or whatever. Was when um, we're kind of getting like really inside baseball here with, but most of the people listening to this probably listen to Blink One Fifty Five. Minus the people from my fantasy football group, <laughs> but but unfortunately, no no already about the Fentuzler for right. the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone like I can't imagine family or teachers or classmates like or anyone outside of Blink One Fifty Five like viewing the Fentuzler 
account at all. That's just, <laughs> and knowing it's me, like right. I couldn't deal with that. But someone like uh, someone from my fantasy football league found my, the Fentuzler account and then told everyone else in the group chat and like they brought it up and I was like, fuck off. No, don't talk about that. I was like genuinely really mad. Okay. But okay, but yeah, anyway, the first time I actually did intentionally piss someone off in as a Fentuzler was when um you remember the audio critic? Oh God, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. That guy like I mean, I feel like most of the nation kinda like hate like hated him. Mm-hmm. And like most of the nation kind of got mad at him, but like he was like saying like "fuck off" and Tuzler, like stop tweeting in all caps. It's annoying and blah 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 blah. And I was like, this guy's just really in a bad place, right? And, like for sure. But I was like genuine, genuinely kind of like trying to like talk some sense into him at first. Like, dude, you're mad at a Blink One Eighty Two podcast, like, and you're a grown man. Like, this is. <laughs> This is not healthy. Right. Like, and so we got, we kind of got it, but that wasn't really trolling. That was like me just kind of realizing, um, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be an antagonizing character if this is what it looks like. Right. Yeah. I definitely think it can go too far sometimes. And I, I mean, I've definitely towed that line as well. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you, you bring it up because it's right in our Twitter bio. I think Twitter bios are hard. So I just saw you had, you had suggested that name for a podcast, Two Trolls, One Podcast. So I was like, okay, I'll throw that on the top of the bio. But I, I don't know. And I certainly don't think that's our intent. I just, Twitter bios no. are hard, I think. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. And then, um, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. I, have, I haven't really like, um, done like any like in like targeted harassment or anything like that right, like no. no absolutely not um no but uh yeah i don't know i, I like it's fun to troll the um like blink 155 account every once in a while mm-hmm. like every once in a while like reminding them that the first x amount of episodes still aren't on spotify that's yeah, always fun that's a good one that's yeah yeah but um I don't know. I think trolling for me, like, and presumably you as well, it's more of like, um, just your relationship with Twitter. It's like, how do you, how do you want to use it? You know, yeah. it's like you can use it to be like a, a dickhead, or you can use it to be like serious friends with people and just kind of play nice and all that. I think for me, I don't know, being I, genuine is just too hard, so I default to being ironic. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and like for me, I just like to make fun of everything, and 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 myself, and I don't know. It's it's been very multi-purposed for me. Yeah, like as like the Fentuzler has sort of evolved. For sure. So, um, yeah, and like I go through periods where it's like I I worry that I'm annoying people too much, mm-hmm. and I'm like maybe I gotta chill. But oh yeah, um, I never have that thought. I don't. I've never once cared <laughs> if I'm annoying people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, like, like when I was like reflecting on it when on the when we thought the pod was over, and like, um, yeah, I was yeah, I was just kind of thinking about how like, um, it for me it was it was always just about like, um, just sort of this not like an art project, but like this weird just i don't know like this really unique sort of journey that was like only for me you know like yeah it's like weird as that sounds it was like i don't know it was like because i never really used twitter before like the podcast so like um so yeah that that was just kind of my introduction to it and i don't know i was thinking about it earlier it's like um if you're like if you have like if you have like emotional problems, definitely don't use Twitter. It's like <laughs> no, outside, I would agree, of, yeah. outside of outside of outside of your state outside of your safe space. Like right. I feel like Link one fifty five is a very safe space. So it's been really good for me to use it. I think maybe but that's what's so strange is finding a community where um 
I haven't been shunned for just being a complete dick basically. And yeah, uh, exactly. I think I appreciate yeah. that. And that's, I mean, I've like, we we talked about, I think on episode zero, maybe last night, we've always, both of us always want to do some sort of podcast, but bigger than that, I, I would like to have some sort of community around that that can be very accepting. And I, I don't have any ideas that we're going to be as big as uh, even a podcast. That's very, very small, like, but whatever, whatever we accomplish here, I hope it's, um, I hope we do it empathetically and like acceptingly of who, of whoever wants to interact um, with or amongst us, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like, yeah. Just because we alienate one group on, on our own time doesn't mean we have to alienate the people that like our stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. And uh, I mean, so the first episode's not even out yet. It'll drop um, a couple nights after we're recording this. We've already had like some really positive feedback just on our episode zero, and some I've had some great interactions with uh, a few people on on Twitter about it. So I'm I'm excited for uh, for what we've got going and what we potentially have coming up. You know? Yeah, we can only go up from here. I think for sure. All right, are we ready to get into to this week's? Yeah, main topic yeah all right we are going to be discussing the album river phoenix by the band river phoenix and here is a clip of that album now politically correct and mentally erect i'm doing everything i can to conserve the best life ain't nothing but a bull of grins in this united states crowd crowd makes me sick people tell me don't make a name for yourself because that's the only way you're gonna get out of this house i'm gonna try and try and try and do all that i can all right okay brian what are tell me i mean had you ever heard of river phoenix before this like were you aware that that's what the band phoenix tx was originally um, I knew, yeah, I knew they were River Phoenix originally and then changed it to Phoenix TX. I always, but I never heard them. I just, in my head, they were always like a rock, a rap rock band. Okay. Like, <laughs> like, um, do you remember the Dude Wears My Car soundtrack? I doubt I ever listened to the Dude Wears My Car soundtrack. <laughs> I knew, yeah, I, like, I got halfway through that question and I was like, this is a very abstract <laughs> question <laughs> to ask someone. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, it. I thought it sounded like that, which is predominantly like weird, like funky rap rock. Okay. I had the CD when I was in like middle school, nice. but um, I thought it sounded like that. Zebrahead were on there. That's what I was gonna say. It so sounds thought, like Zebrahead. I thought it's I, in my head they sounded like Zebrahead. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying that before this you hadn't listened to even like any of Phoenix TX's stuff? No, I had not knowingly. No. Okay. And I was super excited if considering they were a rap rock band in my head because i'm a rap rock aficionado oh okay which may, Good maybe to know. we'll maybe we'll cover as a future collection i don't know maybe. <laughs> god willing <laughs> but um yeah no it was more just along the lines of like skate punk and had like a really juvenile quality that was very similar to blink which i really appreciated mm-hmm. um I couldn't make out all of the words in the little clip you played because I'm they were still having those technical issues on my end. Yeah. Um, but the I could make out the line politically correct and what was it, mildly erect or is that I don't um it's um what is he he says politically correct is something erect. Politically so correct really and out, mentally you know, like, erect. That's right. Yeah. And it was one of the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. And then, uh, yeah, but it was just kind of like skate punk sort of like at its worst, it sounded like the Ataris, but then at its best, it sounded like Dillinger four. Uh huh. I don't know. That means parts, nothing to me, but I'll take your word for it. Dillinger four are really sick. They're like the best Midwest punk band. For okay. Sure. And maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm I'm from Wisconsin, so I have to say tenement. But um, yeah, that's that's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah, it, it sounded like really like it 
like Midwestern punk to me a lot of the time, which is kind of similar to skate punk, but um, yeah, I don't know. It had a weird Midwestern quality for some reason. I don't know where this band is from. Uh, that's a fair enough point. I think they're from California, but because they're like one of the original bands signed to Drive Through, so I would imagine. That probably oh, okay, means they're yeah, from yeah. California, but I don't know for sure. Okay, Phoenix TX. Uh, oh, that's the name of the album I want. Oh, they're from Houston, Texas, actually. Oh, weird. Huh. I want to hear one of their albums chopped and screwed now. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I was never... I, uh, I picked this release specifically because... I feel like um, my memory of it, because it's been a while since I've, I've listened to it, and I, I was never a big fan of this band or even this album, but I felt like it was a really quintessential drive through album because of its the, that pop punk sensibility that it obviously has. I think it's, um, for someone who's new to this type of music, it's very accessible, especially in a juvenile way, I guess. And I knew that, Mark Hoppus from Blink-182 had managed this band for a time, which I did not know about our, our previous release with Finch, but I knew that he had managed Phoenix TX. So I thought, okay, that kind of put, that gives us a connection to a band that's definitely uh, a big influencer within the zeitgeist past and present Blink-182. So I thought, okay, this is, there's got to be something here that we can suss out that shows me how this represents what this label has contributed to the zeitgeist as a whole yeah um yeah i that yeah this was a good pick and then i think um so like what what made them go from river phoenix to phoenix tx i believe aside so, from a possible lawsuit from i think that's what it was i think there was family. a there was a cease and desist order from the uh the estate of river phoenix um <laughs> So they chose it after he died? Yeah, uh-huh. I believe so. That's I don't know when up. River Phoenix... <laughs> so it says here, the band, the band formed in 1995, River Phoenix. The person died in 1993. So yeah, they chose this name after after his death. That's super fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's like if we started a, a podcast called Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. I know that that's what I said I wanted to call it, but you don't have to bring it up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's uh, so this this uh, River Phoenix, the self titled album, came out in 1997 uh, through Drive Through, obviously, and then sometime between then and 1999, they had to change the name to Phoenix TX, and then they released a self titled album as Phoenix TX, which was actually essentially the same album that had pretty much all the same songs that's right yeah because you sent this to me and i was listening to it and i realized oh i already listened to this already because i I, I listened to the phoenix tx album before um because i had like a whole playlist of like most of the drive-through releases that i thought we were going to talk about and i was on there i don't i don't remember there being a ska song on there though there was that was another thing that i thought was really weird because like you mentioned you mentioned thinking that it um, you thought it was like rap rock and the first track has like some rap in it towards the end, the Apple cowboy shampoo. Yeah. Where, you know, there's some, I mean, not really great rap, but there's some rap, but then, yeah, there's like a full on ska song, which I was not expecting when I was listening through it last night. Cause I don't remember that. So it, I think it definitely covers a few different genres, which makes it a lot more interesting than I remember. Cause I remember just being kind of a straight up pop punk record. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of pop punk bands tried to like throw at least one ska song on there just to like keep within, like just to keep it sort of broad. Yeah, and like keep within like the times too, because I think ska was kind of bo- like experiencing a bit of a boom in like the late nineties. I don't know. How do you feel about ska? I don't. I'm like. I don't know. I I really like some ska. There, I mean, uh, our our expanded's another drive through band started out as like um that type of ska band and that's right i really like we're gonna be experiencing more ska yeah and i yeah. really like their albums that were ska like that but then they got you know a lot more progressive with their rock and those were really good as well but i think for me it's um i've got to be in the right mood i guess and it's not just like the right mood to hear it i think i've got to be in the right mood 
to hear a certain band for the first time. And if I'm not in that right headspace, then I probably will never like that band if they're a ska band. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not sure. Like, I know there's been a lot of like pro ska sentiment lately. Mm -hmm. And like, everyone's finally like coming around on ska but I, i'm still on the fence about it i don't know if i want to what was the i don't know if i'm ready for more ska in my life i i, I had a, a ska phase like i said on the i think the first episode i've had like every musical phase you could possibly have with like the punk and metal subgenres or whatever and ska was definitely one of them but i don't know if i'm ready to go back to that one i think it was this song let's let's just take a listen really quick i think this was the ska one Sounds like okay, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Cause we're having tech, we're having audio issues. With yeah. Sounds like this, this sounds like video game. I also think this might be a cover. I don't think this is actually their version. I don't hear the horns. And when I was listening back to the album last night, there were definitely horns on this track. Oh yeah, yeah. When I listened to it earlier today, yeah, it was a full-on ska song for sure. And I was like slightly disgusted. So okay, um, what's going on? Where am I? Uh, so this album, I found problematic right from the beginning, actually, which I was not expecting. Did you? Are you a lyrics person? Like, do you care much about lyrics? Do you pay attention to lyrics? Um, I used to. When I was like a teenager, like lyrics were everything, mm -hmm. but not so much anymore. Not not big on words anymore. Not big on words anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the very first track, uh, so I was listening to it in bed last night before I fell asleep, and the very first track caught me off guard. It's called Apple Pie Cowboy Toothpaste. And is that a reference to Apple Shampoo, do you think? I have no idea. I mean, they were released the same year, so it could be. I, I don't know. But right here in the first verse, he says, okay, how many wrong turns can I make? I'd give a million dollars just to see her smile on top of me. But if she won't give it up, well, that's okay. I never liked that drunk-ass 12-year-old bitch anyway. Whoa! So yeah, that, yeah I didn't. I heard I the twelve-year-old part, and I was like, "Wait, I think maybe I misheard that." And so then I went and found these lyrics online. I was like, "Oh shit, this is not good." Ooh, that yeah, that is even as a joke. That's like you don't. Ugh. Yeah, so that made me instantly feel really gross, and I don't know why he was singing that. That's like that's fucking even up, yeah, like a, yeah, even as like a joke. That's really really in poor taste like that's not even like 12 is not even a teenager that's like oh yeah so no, no bueno i think these guys might be canceled or at least this song and this is like this is the they led with this song on their their first album that's crazy and unexplainably it made it onto the remake two years later when they I, did Phoenix that's what, that was my next question yeah did they Ooh. And I buried it really, really low on the next release, the eleventh track, but I still included it, which is a problem. Yeah, not a good look for Drive Through no. to like release that song twice. Well, uh, I'm, I mean, that not a good look for them to release it at all. But so this, this brings me to my thing where I don't understand all of it. So as I've said, I only consider the drive through releases the ones where drive through put their number on it. This Phoenix TX album was released through MCA. Now it had the drive through logo on the record, but isn't listed as an official release of drive through but rather of MCA. And I don't, I mean, it's, it's semantics and it's technicalities. Either way, they, someone agreed to release this song twice, which is disgusting. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I missed that when I was listening to it, but ugh. yeah, I mean, I knew there was something like one. I, I knew there was something questionable in the lyrics of like one of the songs, but it wasn't the first one. I I, I remember hearing 
something slightly misogynistic that kind of gave me a pause, but I can't remember which one it was. Well, and the other but, thing, I think when I was researching earlier, because the second song on the album is called GBOH, and I think that also, that's like an acronym for something not great. I saw it earlier, but I wish I had. GBOH. Uh, okay, according to Wikipedia, stands for Gangster Bitches on Heroin. Oh, and that was actually oh. the, 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 the name okay. of their debut EP that they released in 1996. Gangster Bitches on Heroin. All right. <laughs> and it looks like that has a yeah. lot of the same songs that made it onto this album. Now, this was not a drive through release. This was released by Fuzzgun Records in Houston, it looks like. Fuzzgun. So, I mean, I don't know. That's not a great, a great name for a... A song or an no. Album. And I mean, it's just, yeah, they're making a lot of questionable choices. Yeah, and I think sadly, it's more like I wish this was the exception rather than the rule. But I think at the time, there were a lot of a lot of bands that had a lot of problematic takes like this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know how many of them involved twelve-year-olds, but right. Yeah. Like yeah, like I said, that one just feels way too extreme. Like, I, maybe they like I don't want to justify it for them, but maybe they thought like they just had to go really out there to get noticed or something. Or well, there's like this this idea of being like a shock jock, right? Like everyone wants to be yeah. Howard Stern or something. They think that this is the equivalent of something more nuanced. Which someone like Howard Stern is like, this isn't nuanced. This is just gross. Exactly. I like how this started with me saying, yeah, it was really juvenile, like Blink, and I really liked it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> the first lyric is like, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, actually, no, this is really bad. Right. Well, that's that was my plan. I wanted to hear you say you liked it and then just kind of drop <laughs> this right on you. <laughs> you got me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that really threw me off. I'm, I'm like, I've like forgotten pretty much everything else I was gonna say about this. <laughs> like, this is, I just feel really gross. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, trying trying to move past that. I mean, for you, what were there any that stuck out to you as being really good songs or really like songs that you that weren't so great? Um, like, what stuck out to you about the songs? I don't know, but they, it just felt really typical like poppy skate punk yeah but um like i said at like at its worst it's reminded me of the ataris like a lot of, i feel like a lot of like the guitar riffs were really repetitive yeah for really sure basic. that kind of reminded me of the ataris but um i don't know like the, the more like straightforward punk stuff it really like really reminded me of like a lesser dillinger four which i i know you don't get that reference but it but it's like um that kind of impressed me a little bit, but it made me want to go listen to Dillinger for okay. more than anything um, who are kind of problematic in their own way, but not, not to the degree of this, not as juvenile, just more of um, dude likes to get drunk and then naked on stage. Yeah. So every once in a while. So that's considerably harmless compared to some of these lyrics. So, yeah. Um, so I think yeah. it looks like, I mean, I mentioned this earlier, but they were managed by Mark Coppice for a while, but then Blink kind of blew up and um, the management was taken over by Rick DeVoe, who's also managing Blink at the time. And it looks like, so I think Mark got on board after hearing this album. Uh, and it looks like there were like typical red tape bureaucratic bullshit that kind of got in the way of this band being any more successful because they kind of had these great this great album uh under their belt and then there was disputes between drive through and mca and then the lawsuit from the estate of river phoenix um so they had to kind of rebrand and wait for drive through and mca to, to settle out their differences and um, before in the end all they really did was release this album again as a different name was pretty much the extent to which what they did after this, as far as I can tell. <laughs> wow, they didn't do anything after this. Well, so they I mean they released that, and then 
Um, they released another one in 2001 with through MCA and Drive Through, an album called Lachusa or Lacusa, and then that that was the last release they did. I think they've reunited a few times since then, but I, I'm not seeing. Oh, it looks like they put out an EP in 2016. But yeah, oh. I mean, this was. I think basically this was. This and the follow-up self-titled under the new name were pretty much the pinnacle of their their career. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't imagine like playing some of those songs live. Like, I'm just, I'm just like, still like hung up on like those lyrics, man. Like, you got like, did they play that song live? Did that the the singer sing those lyrics like but, uh, to the like? Okay, well, be careful what you ask for. Let's find out here. Yeah, I don't know. I this is uh, this can lead to some bad YouTubing. <laughs> Um, apple pie cowboy toothpaste it's such a weird name too i never remember it right yeah well my first thought was like i thought it was like a dig at like apple shampoo by blink i didn't even think of that but it could make sense i'm not finding any live albums thankfully yeah so maybe they at least had the sense not to I mean, I'm sure they played it live at some point, but 1997, probably hard to have gotten a video from that onto YouTube. So probably by the time it's more common that things like this are recorded, they at least realize this is not a song that they should be propping up. Hopefully, yeah. Like, I can't imagine, like, you, like them reuniting and playing that song. Yeah, I don't know. You're having a, a better luck um, YouTubing this band than I did. We'll get to that. So, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think I've said kind of what, I, what my thoughts were on the album and why I think, I mean, what, what do you make of my assessment that there, like, there's that direct link to blink, which kind of, to me, Oh, for sure. When yeah. You, when you think of the early days of drive through anyway, which we'll call from their inception of 1997 until, I don't know, let's say nine 11. Cause I wish I had a nine 11 joke to go right here. But if that's, that's kind of that's like, another thing, yeah. You you were promising nine eleven jokes on Twitter. Uh, I mean, three episodes, nothing, nothing. I mean, there's still time. I can think of something maybe. But um, yeah. So I mean, let's call those four years like the the really early days of the label, and I feel like this is the quintessential release that represents the idea and the aesthetic of um, what the bands were accomplishing musically. I think. For sure, yeah, because it had like the you know all the all the joke songs that were obviously very juvenile and disgusting and misogynistic and pedophilic i guess Apparently. like mm -hmm. yeah and um and mixed with like you know some sensitive songs about like wanting girls to like you and that kind of thing so yeah it did like capture the, the pop punk um yeah it, it, in the midst of it you know the zeitgeist at the time and uh yeah, it definitely set the tone for at least some of the subsequent releases. I mean, I'm assuming something corporate lyrics are a little more mature. In, uh, I mean, by comparison. yeah, I mean, you've got things like if you see Jordan, but that's probably about as juvenile that, as that, they yeah, thought. That's yeah. the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. But that's a classic song. I mean, there's not not a lot of I don't want to say. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to say anything without hearing the whole thing because they could i don't want to say it's not problematic but maybe it is something corporate yeah i mean possibly um yeah or i mean specifically if you see jordan i mean that's not like that's not terribly lowbrow not terribly low to, brow. i mean it's definitely juvenile yeah. like off the top of my head i can't think of necessarily anything problematic i know the songwriter of that one is no longer really proud of that one i mean that's something we'll get to once we cover that oh release. yeah but yeah it's uh it's definitely a juvenile track kind of in in the same vein as maybe like a, a phoenix tx a river phoenix song yeah it's like yeah people are in their like early 20s making music for teenagers basically yeah. it's like so so i think so the big song off of this one which wasn't really a big song until it was re-released on the phoenix tx album was all my fault and um i think we both independently found this music video, um, which obviously with Mark we're Hoppus going to be able to see, but yeah, Mark Hoppus was in the music video. 
Um, Wait, so- okay, so there's a moment like that gave me pause when I watched it, and it's right about now when he turns on the TV. Yeah, because look what's on the TV. So, so jailbait. It's mm-hmm. always nice to meet a new Which I around. thought throughout the duration of this video was like... Like, Adam, a softcore porn? Okay. And that's why it was called oh, yeah. jailbait? Uh-huh. So, I mean, I noticed the same so, thing. We're and, just doing it. Um, right before that shows up on the screen, it, uh, in the, like, little credits in the bottom corner, it says this is music from the film Jailbait. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that. Okay, that was the MTV is that the MTV film you were referring to? Yeah, and so that's what kind of sent me down that. And it doesn't even have like oh, okay. a, a proper Wikipedia page, but there's this made. I don't f- even remember that one. It's a made for TV movie wiki. And so a like brief overview of the plot of this movie. And this fits in, you know, disgustingly perfect, I guess, for a, a, a band that has some of the lyrics we've already covered. It was a, a movie called Jailbait um, from MTV in the year 2000. And the plot is Adam is a senior at Gatlin High and his girlfriend Amber is saving herself for marriage. In the meantime, he gets acquainted with a sophomore and gets her pregnant. And the local prosecutor is running for mayor and decides to charge him with statutory rape to get the moral majority vote. Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> so I have never seen this before. Um, but I thought I'm going to see if I can find a clip just to see if we can see, I mean, what this, I mean, it looks like they've got, I mean, you can find the whole movie here. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> we could do that for a Patreon so, episode. Yeah, that would, that would <laughs> certainly make for something. Uh, okay. We'll go with clip five for 11. Oh, I think this is the clip they were watching in the music video. So Ginger. It's always nice to meet a new friend of Adam's. Actually, we're more than just friends. Adam, aren't you and Amber still going steady? So yeah, we were having audio issues with YouTube on my end. So all of these people talking sound like the Peanuts, like adults. (laughs) For me, it's like wah, 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 wah. Okay, she just we said, it. It. She is, she's talking about Christ-like behavior. I don't mean to be hard on you, but you okay. know, Jesus was against sex for pleasure. And now she's claiming that Jesus was against sex for David pleasure. Tully, where Jesus slept with this chick. Hmm. I don't even recognize any of these actors either. I feel like I recognize the mom from Actually, somewhere. my mom doesn't really care what I do. Although mine being knocked up might get a rise out of her. Okay, so this girl's what? the pregnant girl, I think. Oh, I'm pregnant. You know, like Mary was with Jesus, except I know who the father is. Dear Lord. <laughs> All right, well, that, that that, really, uh, really well, some of that great MTV movie production. Yeah, I don't like, see, I grew up on MTV, just like watching it every single fucking day. Like, uh-huh. PRL, all that stuff. Oh, for sure. Don't remember. Yeah. And, and some of the movies, too, but don't remember that one at all. All right, well, let's watch. I, I suppose we're required to watch at least one live one. Um, here, we'll go with, we'll watch that song, All My Fault, live in Dallas. I know you're not going to be able to hear it very well. This is actually legitimately a good song. For me. It is a like, good this song. This is stuck in my head for a lot of it, though. What year is this? This looks a lot later. It was uploaded in 2016. Yeah, you know, one thing I'll say about um, this this band and the band we uh, we covered last week, uh, Finch, they both seem to be pretty decent live bands, which is, uh, I guess, something I'm not used to. A lot of the bands I've liked uh, turned out to be quite shitty live, actually. Oh really? Like like one eighty two for instance. Yeah, they were not very good when I saw them, but that was the reunion tour, so mm-hmm. I was super excited anyway. For sure. 
Uh, okay, so there's that. So I think that was pretty much the extent of what I had. And now uh, you had dug up a few videos that you sent me. Do you want to give me some background on what we're about to watch yeah, here? So I was trying to do some YouTube research of my own because I have I realized that I haven't really done my fair share of of research yet. Um, I didn't want to say anything, but sure, yes. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I tried to um google or maybe youtube river phoenix not i i try to avoid phoenix tx just so i can get the authentic like version of right. these songs or whatever uh-huh. and um i just got um i typed in river phoenix band and then i got the actor river phoenix's okay. band um i forget the name already it looks like it's it called something, something yeah alica's Al- yeah Ale- yeah alica's attic or some some shit they're like they're like a folk band so yeah let's give that a listen and i think this is like all like archive i think this might be after like they put together this video after she died i don't really know much about this guy well it's walking his Phoenix's brother, older brother yeah yeah his brother is the joker right all right, this song sounds even better with the audio issues <laughs> that I'm having. Yeah, it sounds like Daniel Johnston, like <laughs> with the weird vocals. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad song. But no, it's, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Oh, it kind of has a like a ska it, yeah, type beat like, there. It, it goes in a lot of different directions. Yeah, not full on ska, but no. it, it's really with some different tempos for sure. Alex's Attic, or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's not bad. No. Okay. For like, I mean, it's. I mean, for an actor like with a band, you could do a lot worse. Oh, I agree. I mean, we've seen people do a lot worse, so... Yeah. Okay, now tell me about this other one you sent me. (laughs) So this is what I open my chat, and I see Flea and River Phoenix, and then I'm I'm completely lost (laughs) at that point. (laughs) Yeah, like, one of the other things that came up was just, like, a jam session River River Phoenix, the late actor, did with Flea. Okay. So let's check that out. So yeah, River Phoenix is playing a nice, what looks like a, a yellow telecaster, and then we got three on the bass here just doing the three things. Which, with my audio, just sounds like bad primus. <laughs> is that River Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, the way the shadows yeah, on there, I thought this was like a beard, but that's just his shirt or something. <laughs> But yeah, he's, he's a better guitar player than Sammy Jeff. I'll give him all. Have you ever seen Johnny Depp try to play guitar? I have not. He's in like some band called like I think Hollywood Vampires, maybe, with him and like Alice Cooper and probably some other stinky people. Now they were really good friends, right? As far as I recall correctly. I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I'll, I. I accidentally did a lot of River Phoenix research. <laughs> Please name came up a lot. Okay, so that's what the next collection is going to be about is River Phoenix then? I think it should be about Flea. About Flea. Flea that's Flea. probably more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the album. Uh, I mean, did, so you didn't find any covers. I really want to find like weird covers of something. I don't I never find anything here. Let me... Yeah, I didn't even think about looking up uh, looking up covers. For some reason, I'm I really just... obsessed with finding a doo-wop cover of anything, <laughs> and I don't I don't know why. I can't imagine there's a lot of doo-wop covers. Uh, eh, it's YouTube. There's there's everything. I mean, there's lots of doo-wop covers here. Nothing from Phoenix TX though. Have you seen the acapella cover of Taking Back Sunday? I have not. No. It's like. It's, a, it's like a college um, acapella group. It's like all guys doing cute without the E, I think. Oh, a classic. And it's, it's just 
It was on that um um what's it called? It's not active anymore. Uh, Catatonic Youth. That like that Facebook page and Instagram page that just does just really cringe and embarrassing. Yeah, it's the second one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well we'll listen to this. Oh, this is so fun. This is emo acapella, cute without the E. (laughs) Oh, why are they zooming in so close? (laughs) So Uh, cringy. It's just, yeah. How do you not get like secondhand embarrassment from this? So I'm from Utah, and there's tons of group, like Mormon groups, just like this in Utah. So this is, I'm well too aware of things like this. Wait, there's Mormon acapella groups. Yeah. Uh huh. Is that like a big thing? Like, is that like a cultural thing? Like Mormon acapella? Uh, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. My best friend growing up was in a acapella group, and now he's like the director of an acapella group at BYU. Oh wow! So, yeah, it's uh, it's not an insignificant thing in these parts, uh, right? Unfortunately, that exists. That does exist. Mormon acapella. Yeah, <laughs> this exists. Right, <laughs> this exists. Mormon acapella. It sounds like <laughs> something Sam would do for this exists. It's Mormon acapella. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, no one on Twitter had any hot takes because you pieces of shit have never heard of this album or probably this <laughs> band. So I have. Been... I honestly think they're better off for not hearing this one. It's possible. Okay. I do you have anything else to cover? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Final um, thoughts then on River Phoenix by River Phoenix. Um, led to some good podcasting content but probably wouldn't listen again yeah i mean i thought for sure i was gonna come back to this and be like oh i i like it now but now i just know they're canceled and this was actually really gross yeah yeah um yeah not not drive through records finest hour that's no, for sure mm-mm. and certainly... but it did, i mean they had to start somewhere right and yeah they, they picked a, a good one to start with in the sense that it kind of set the stage for what was to come, but maybe a little toned down on the, on the pedophilic lyrics. I'd be interested to know if this is as bad as any of the lyrics get on from any of their, their artists, or if this is um, maybe all yeah, too I representative we'll, of the era I and not just we'll find out. It is pop punk. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's, that's it till next time. Yeah, episode two in the can. Peace.